happening is that as people died off, they left houses and fields. The whole wealth that had been built up in the unknown renaissance of 1100 and 1200 figured around the Knights Templars uh, as the uh, benefactors of that. Um, they, the houses and fields and property and gold and food was left there. There weren't anybody around to eat or live in them. So our image of the devastation of the Black Death is that it's just terrible. Everybody's dying and corpses are here and there. No, what actually happened, it was a glorious effect. For the next hundred years, the uh, citizens of Europe partied, celebrated, had orgies, played, because there was all this wealth all around. Right. They basically didn't have to work. Now, right. the one problem was the fields, with the grains and wheat and food that they had, there weren't enough people to till the fields to keep it going. So that is what sparked the mania for technological evolution, for new inventions. Marco Polo had brought over the printing press from China in the 1200s, and the printing press is sitting there as people start to die off in this 100-year process from 1250 to 1350. And uh, uh, because the Catholic Church's indulgences uh, need to be continually distributed, but there are nobody to, hand, to make them, no monks to uh, hand write them in the manuscript culture, they immediately started revving up the printing press and eventually invented the movable, movable type, which really moved things forward. So historically, we are taught that the printing press came in with Gutenberg in 1450, actually came in by 1300 and spurred the innovations and technologies and all the technologies we have today are a result of the black death all right oh. the great explosion of invention because there were enough people around so they had to get their minds applied to it and i've talked about how the souls go into the guff and then escrow is left of unrealized uh, dreams and then the babies bring in the unrealized dreams well there was the biggest population growth right after the death and historically the uh, great plague is the biggest die-off in human history probably will be you know millions but it also everybody got pregnant everybody sort of started responding to this collectively right. so there's all kinds of babies who brought in abilities to invent new things and the renaissance took off so to speak a uh, hundred years before what we think in, in history and it led to this great technological abundance we have today. So it's interesting to get the dates correct or have our images of the situation. Now, the other point to relate to this is that this collapse today, why is the astral plane leaping? Because people are going to be forced to create new realities, new situations in this paralysis that we got themselves into. They know that it's a post-information society. There's no proof reason to listen to the news because they're just going to recycle within cliches and known wisdom like that book review I gave. They just recycle the same points and they don't get you to the present like our show does. And so there's going to be great renaissance coming in as a result of this collapse. So we're trying, even though you might That's not great. understand how, even though you might not understand how, you got to begin to meditate and listen to our archives and our shows to show you how to see this. Now another factor is there are so many people on the planet, six billion souls, who are dying. There's not enough room in the heaven we apparently go to, called the guff in the Kabbalah wisdom. Uh, there's so many souls piling into the guff that there's not enough room anymore. Now imagine this, James. I'm citing uh, pretty strange information here, but I like to drop bombs and, and push the envelope. Nobody else is going to do it. There's right. so many people dying and going in and filling up the guff. There's not enough room. So it looks like we, there's no, going to be no room for us, James. So we got to start realizing we're immortal and stay in the body. There's no room <laughs> in the guff. There's no escape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to become uh, a perceiver of the fact there's no difference between uh, being alive and being dead, that the non-physical energies are right here inside you. So uh, that's another little positive idea.